name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Well, as we've just heard, Luke, the author of today's Gospel, uses two animals in his reading, a fox and a hen, to teach us about moral truths. And many writers have used animals allegorically in their stories to teach us things. And I suppose the most well-known of these would be Aesop and his fables. I'm sure we're all very much aware of the tortoise and the hare. Other authors have used animals too. George Orwell in Animal Farm. C.S. Lewis in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And even Dr. Zeus in his poem Yertle the Turtle. And our story begins with the Pharisees coming to Jesus to advise him to get away. Herod is wanting to kill him. And hearing of this, Jesus called Herod a fox. And what does this metaphor, this figure of speech, bring to your minds? Well, traditionally, foxes are thought of as being sly, cunning, crafty, Think Little Red Riding Hood. And we know that Herod was a cunning person in both his personal and his political life. He portrayed a good persona in public, but acted badly. He was a predator, feeding off the lives of the people he ruled. He used his power to grind people down and to threaten them. In truth, he was just a small-minded fox, afraid of those who publicly questioned his actions or who opposed his self-serving ambitions. And in political life, he was much the same. As ruler of the area of Galilee, he can be seen trying to avoid offending the Jews, but he sometimes fails spectacularly. It was Herod who established the city of Tiberias, but unfortunately, it was on a site of a cemetery, which was considered unclean by the Jews who wouldn't settle there. It was Herod who had allowed John the Baptist to be beheaded, John having questioned the legality of Herod's marriage to Herodias. In Jesus' day, there was a proverb along the lines of, Today, when people are at home, they tend to think of themselves as lions, but in public they are just foxes. And indeed, whatever Herod thought of himself, to Jesus, Herod is more of a fox than he ever was a lion. Jesus dismisses the fox's intimidating death threats with a message that he won't be intimidated by him but he will carry on casting out demons and curing the sick. Jesus, his real threat, is in Jerusalem, not Rome. Herod is an insignificant little fox, no one to fear. The lion, not the fox, is the king of the beasts. But enough for now about Herod. I'm sure that we've all seen pictures or read stories of real foxes prowling around the hen houses. You may be aware also of the sly fox politicians talking of their concern about migrants or benefit cuts, but hiding their real feelings and using airy fairy language to manipulate people. Perhaps you know a sly fox who is always trying to get their own way. Foxes are cruel, calculating. So where can Jesus go? Jerusalem was once a safe haven from the enemies of God's people, a hen house impervious to foxes. But now, to many of the prophets, Jerusalem has become the symbol of a people under God's judgment. The social order had been unsettled, and the city was like an animal feeding on the weak. Prophets who came to Jerusalem with messages about God were eagerly devoured. People were rejecting the freeing word of God that came through the voices of the prophets, and 
Jesus, who was bringing that message of the liberation of God's grace, lamented over the city of Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wing, and you were not willing. Maybe you don't really see Jesus as a hen, more of a rooster, defending his flock and himself from the fox. Can Jesus be like a hen, a female chicken, offering himself to the people of Jerusalem as a mother hen? I know that some people do have difficulty imagining Jesus as mother, but throughout the ages there have been references to Jesus as mother, an image which imparts a picture of tenderness, compassion and comfort. St Anselm, a former Archbishop of Canterbury, said, as part of a longer prayer, Christ my mother, you gather your chickens under your wings. This dead chicken of yours puts himself under those wings. Jesus would have taken this maternal image from his own Jewish tradition, and after all, Judaism is passed on through the mother. He knew God to be like a mother hen, gathering her children under her warm wings. And there are in references to taking shelter under wings, both in the book of Ruth and Psalms, for instance. Look them up later. It's sad, then, that Jesus is offering to gather people under his wing, but the people are not willing to let him do this. Do we want to be gathered under God's protective wings? After all, doesn't God want a personal and intimate relationship with each and every one of us, just like most mothers do with their children? It's God's desire to gather us together under protective wings when the harmful things in our lives threaten to engulf us or when the fox tries to prey upon us. God wants to gather us under her wings when we grieve, when we're anxious, or when we merely need the warmth of God's accepting presence. Underneath God's wings is a vulnerable place to be. You can't strike back, but it doesn't mean that you're chicken, far from it. So as we go from here today, the question we need to consider is this. Will we allow ourselves to be taken under God's wings? Or will we turn to the fox who offers us security through power, violence and control? The choice is yours to make. Amen.